6. That the Son of Man hath authority on earth. This authority is very different from what was given to the apostles, and from what is now exercised by the pastors of the church, for they cannot so properly be said to pardon sins, as to declare that they are pardoned, when they deliver the commission which is entrusted to them. By these words Christ declares that he is not only the minister and witness, but likewise the author, of this grace. But what means this restriction, on earth? Of what avail will it be to us to have obtained pardon here, if it be not ratified in heaven? Christ's meaning was, that forgiveness of sins ought not to be sought from a distance, for he exhibits it to men in his own person, and as it were in his hands. So strong is our inclination to distrust, that we never venture to believe that God is merciful to us, till he draws near, and speaks familiarly to us. Now, as Christ descended to earth for the purpose of exhibiting to men the grace of God as present, he is said to forgive sins visibly, because in him and by him the will of God was revealed which, according to the perception of the flesh, had been formerly hidden above the clouds. 8. And the multitudes who saw instead of astonishment which Matthew mentions, the other two evangelists employ the word ecstasis, or amazement, and Luke adds fear but the design of all the evangelists is to show, that the power of God was not merely acknowledged, but that all were struck with astonishment, and compelled to give glory to God. The fear, which followed the astonishment, had the effect of preventing them from opposing Christ, and of making them submit to him with reverence as a prophet of God. Matthew expressly says, that they glorified God, who had given such authority to men here they appear to be partly mistaken, for, though they see a man with their eyes, they ought to have perceived in him, by the mind, something higher than man. They are no doubt right in saying, that the nature of man received great honor in Christ for the general advantage of the human race, but as they do not perceive him to be God manifested in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3-6, their confession is involved in some error. In a word, it was true, that God gave such authority to men, but the form and manner of giving was not yet understood by those who were not aware that the majesty of God was united to flesh. Matthew 9-9. Jesus saw a man sitting at the custom house. The custom house has usually been a place noted for plundering and for unjust exactions, and was at that time particularly infamous. In the choice of Matthew out of that place, not only to be admitted into the family of Christ, but even to be called to the office of Apostle, we have a striking instance of the grace of God. It was the intention of Christ to choose simple and ignorant persons to that rank, in order to cast down the wisdom of the world, 1 Corinthians 2-6, but this publican, who followed an occupation little esteemed and involved in many abuses, was selected for additional reasons, that he might be an example of Christ's undeserved goodness, and might show in his person that the calling of all of us depends, not on the merits of our own righteousness, but on his pure kindness. Matthew, therefore, was not only a witness and preacher, but was also a proof and illustration of the grace exhibited in Christ. He gives evidence of his gratitude in not being ashamed to hand down for perpetual remembrance the record of what he formerly was, and whence he was taken, that he might more fully illustrate in his person the grace of Christ. In the same manner Paul says, This is a faithful saying, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, 1 Timothy 1 15. As to Mark and Luke calling him Levi, it appears that this was his ordinary name, but that his being a publican was the reason why he took a foreign name. Follow me there is no reason to doubt that Christ explained in many words why he was called, and on what conditions. This is more fully ascertained from Luke, who says, that he left all, rose up, and followed Christ, for it would not have been necessary for him to leave all, if he had not been a private disciple of Christ and called in expectation of the apostleship. In the great readiness and eagerness of Matthew to obey, we see the divine power of the word of Christ. Not that all in whose ears he utters his voice are equally affected in their hearts, but in this man Christ intended to give a remarkable example, that we might know that his calling was not from man. Luke 5 29.
and Levi made him a great banquet This appears to be at variance with what Luke relates, that he left all, but the solution is easy. Matthew disregarded every hindrance, and gave up himself entirely to Christ, but yet did not abandon the charge of his own domestic affairs. When Paul, referring to the example of soldiers, exhorts the ministers of the word to be free and disentangled from every hindrance, and to devote their labors to the church, he says. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of life, that he may please the commander, 2 Timothy 2-4. He certainly does not mean, that those who enroll themselves in the military profession divorce their wives, forsake their children, and entirely desert their homes, but that they quit their homes for a time, and leave behind them every care, that they may be wholly employed in war. In the same manner, nothing kept Matthew from following where Christ called, and yet he freely used both his house and his property, as far as the nature of his calling allowed. It was necessary, indeed, that he should leave the custom house, for, had he been detained there, he would not have been a follower of Christ. 519. It is called a great banquet, with reference not to the multitude of the guests, but to the abundance and magnificence of the provisions, for we know that Christ did not practice such austerity, as not to allow himself to be sometimes entertained more splendidly by the rich, provided that there were no superfluity. Yet we cannot doubt that, as he was a remarkable example of temperance, so he exhorted those who entertained him to frugality and moderation in diet, and would never have endured wasteful and extravagant luxuries. Matthew says that sinners that is, men of wicked lives and of infamous character came to the banquet. The reason was, that the publicans, being themselves generally hated and despised, did not disdain to associate with persons of that description, for, as moderate correction produces shame and humiliation in transgressors, so excessive severity drives some persons to despair, makes them leave off all shame, and abandon themselves to wickedness. In levying custom or taxes there was nothing wrong, but when the publicans saw themselves cast off as ungodly and detestable persons, they sought consolation in the society of those who did not despise them on account of the bad and disgraceful reputation which they shared along with them. Meanwhile, they mixed with adulterers, drunkards, and such characters, whose crimes they would have detested, and whom they would not have resembled had not the public hatred and detestation driven them to that necessity.